All right, we're going to get underway. Uh, so Drupal is 16 now, and we could expect some growing pains by this age. Uh, anyone who's got teenagers would know what I'm talking about. But um, this is kind of my attempt to distill my incoherent ramblings to my colleagues into something cohesive. And uh, I'm going to present, first of all, what my answer to this hypothesis, and then we'll have a discussion about it. So there's a bit of time for both. So first of all, the answer to my hypothesis, does Drupal have an identity problem? And if this thing works? Yes, it does. <laughs> all right, let's discuss it. <laughs> But seriously, um, now some people may be here evaluating Drupal or new to Drupal, and I just want to uh, reassure you that everything is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> right? There's no trouble in paradise, and all free open source software projects have these issues, right? Uh, if you had an open source project that you started today, and I told you in 16 years there'd be people, you know, this many people who come together enough, care about it enough to have these kinds of discussions, you would take that you know, any day of the week. So it's good, we're in a good position to be in. And I think uh, someone said that open source is basically a process of violent agreement. And that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to hash out what we think the problems are and, uh, you know, have a conversation two way. And, you know, we work together and we're only here because we care. So, I don't know what I've done here. Hey. Uh, so let's get into it. The juicy bits. First of all, a bit about me. I just want to clarify that uh, you know I'm not just some random guy waffling on about Drupal. Oh, this. Excuse me. So uh, I've been doing this uh, for eight years or so. If you look at my Drupal.org profile, but uh, I actually didn't sign up for an account for about a year. So it's pretty ordinary. Yeah, uh, I've worked on over 450 core patches in Drupal 8. Uh, I maintain four core modules. 40 plus contrib. I'm a member of the security team, uh, a senior Drupal dev at PNX or previous Next, and I think that I'm at the point in the relationship with Drupal where I can say we have problems or we need to talk, and and I think yeah, I, I think I can I can have that frame. So oh, I'm really not, not used to this double screen thing. So let's start with some navel gazing. Before we look at the problem, we just got to have to gauge if we have an identity problem. And so let's just start with a really easy question. What is Drupal? Right? Now, there is a good saying. Uh, this is from Angie, Angela Byron. Drupal is a content modeling framework, a content management system, and a kick-ass community. And so even when you answer, ask a simple question like, what is Drupal, you have to answer in three parts. Uh, Dries has later, lately been calling Drupal uh, an am for ambitious digital experiences, but those of you who are familiar with Ember would realise that that's their catchphrase. Um, but I think, above all, the third line is the most important. And as a community, we've always skated to where the puck's going to be next, and we drag the software along, right? So Drupal is bigger than the software, it's the people and their knowledge that are uh, what make Drupal great. So if we look at the definition on Drupal.org, and this is really big on my screen, but I'll read it. It says, uh, Drupal is content management software. It is used to make many of the websites and applications you use every day. Drupal has great standard features like easy content authoring, reliable performance, and excellent security. But what sets it apart is its flexibility, modularity, is one of its core principles, and its tools help you build the versatile structured content that dynamic web experiences need. There is something missing from that definition. Now, that I put the emphasis on the words, building and make. There is no, no, uh, nothing in that definition covers install it and you're done. There is nothing about a product. It's for making things and building things. So is Drupal a product? There's no mention of it in our mission statement. There's no mention in our three-tier definition. Or is it just a framework? So to answer that, I'm going to reference Angie again, she gave a session in Dublin called How Our Competitors Are Kicking Drupal's Ass, and that's the link if you want to see the slides, and there's video as well. And in that session, she talks about these. WordPress, Squarespace, Wix, Sitecore, Adobe Experience Manager, and Contentful. Now, they're kind of in categories. WordPress, obviously everyone knows. Squarespace and Wix, they're like build your own website using our UI type thing. Sitecore and Adobe Experience Manager, they're aimed at the enterprise end of the scale, and then Contentful is kind of the odd one out here. That's basically um, content editing as a service, and it provides you with a REST API to access your content. But 
If you look at all three, all of these here, there's a pattern. They're all complete products. The things that aren't mentioned in there, Laravel, Symphony, Rails, Django, these are the things that I see Drupal as a competitor to. And even ourselves, we compete with ourselves, but I'll talk about that later. So are we a product or are we a framework? Maybe we are a product, just an ugly one that hasn't synthesized yet into the beautiful, you know, the beautiful butterfly. Uh, we're still getting there 16 years later. So what is a product? Well, a product serves a need and it fills a purpose and it solves a problem. Does Drupal do that? Out of the box? And if it does, what problem does Core solve? And like on its own, not much. Like, is there anyone in this room who's ever built a site with just Core and just the stock themes? You two win a prize. <laughs> I think instead of asking what problem does Core solve, we probably need to ask whose problem does Core solve? And in reality, nobody. There is no specific person that Core is built for. Um, but we have a product manager. We have two product managers for Drupal Core. People, were people aware of that or not? So their job is to evaluate things for Drupal that, you know, do they fit what constitutes our product? Um, and so because we don't know what problem or whose problem we're trying to solve, we just keep adding things to Core because we have to keep competing with those competitors. But we don't really even know who our audience is yet. Is it developers? Site builders, designers, amateurs, hobbyists, enterprise, content editors, all of these people have used Drupal for something in the past and they've all, could all stake a claim in saying that Drupal is for them. We don't even know and even Core doesn't know, right? It's confused. So I'm going to show you some exhibits from, these are from just from Core. Uh, one is the CMI initiative versus place blocks and outside in. So everyone's familiar with CMI, right? It's like an it's initially focused on a Git workflow. You separate your configuration from your content and you, know, you go through a deployment pipeline. You make your changes in a pull request, you check it into the code base, it goes to dev, it goes to staging, and then it goes to production. And you know, you've got a full pipeline there. But then we have two new blocks, uh, two new modules in core that are called place blocks, which is an 8.2 that lets you basically easily place a block in the context of the site. You don't need to go to the blocks administration page. You can hit a link in the toolbar, hit place blocks, and do it all from there. And we have another one called outside in, which lets you, like, you can edit your menu items, but you can also edit like your site slogan or your site name and all that through the front end part of Drupal rather than going into the back end part. Now, are those features, the last two, focused on developers or are they focused on site owners? And if they are focused on site owners, then where does that leave CMI? Because those last two are changing config entities and configuration on your environment that can directly sort of conflicts with what you've got tripped into your Git repository. And if you deploy and do a config import, well, those changes are lost unless you somehow sync them back from production back to your, you know, to your Git repository. So are they a user-facing feature or are they focused on developers? I don't know. Exhibit B, Composer versus the Update UI module. Now, Boyan uh, maintains commerce and he also maintains the address module. So the address module in Drupal 8 relies on a Composer library that the commerce guys wrote called Addressing. And it's like a best of breed uh, address library for PHP. It integrates with Google's addressing system and it's, you know, it's not just for Drupal, it's for the whole PHP ecosystem. And it's being used by other PHP projects already. But to install the address module, you need to install, uh, sorry, the address field module, you need to install the address library and that's done with Composer. So his argument is, well, people who want to do a production update on CMS isn't our audience anymore. Now the thing is, if you install the address module, and you do the right thing and you go to the command line, you use Composer and you, and you do you know, Composer install address and you get that library and then you do the right thing and you're on your production site and you see the little warning says there are security updates available and you click on the update now, your site is hosed because when you hit that button it fetches the tarball from Drupal.org which contains the vendor folder and that vendor folder writes over the top of your vendor folder and blows away whatever you install with Composer. So, 
If we're using Composer for a workflow, why not use a real framework like Symfony or something? Why, why use Drupal? Um, you know, have we abandoned our origins, which was that you could click something together as a site builder without having to go into command line in the code? And the worrying thing about this is, as of July 2016, I've got some statistics from the DA here, but 20% of all D7 module downloads were from the update manager in the UI. So that's one in five module updates, uh, module downloads. And if you think about how many module downloads there are from all the CI systems out there that are building, right? Still out of that, one in five is done in the UI. That's Drupal 7. It's still 13% for Drupal 8. So we can't just say, oh, yep, you've got to use Composer, because the fact is, more than one in 10 of our users still uses uh, you know, the update UI. And where does that leave the developers, right? I don't want to work on the update module. I've never used it. I only want to work on stuff that I'm interested in. And I've only got limited volunteer time. And if, I don't know if you're aware or not, but the update module delayed the release of Drupal 8. It was one of the critical bugs in that critical bug countdown that was right towards the end. And there was an open critical issue that said, if somebody doesn't step up and maintain this and fix it to work with Drupal 8, we're just going to remove it. That was our solution to fixing the bugs in it. Someone stepped up and maintained it, and that was uh, David Rothstein, who's maintained Drupal 7. Um, but largely, the people who don't use this are expected to maintain it, and the people who do use it aren't equipped to maintain it because they, they don't want to get involved in development. They want to use what Drupal's been focused on for the site building. So again, we've got this confusion going on. And now I mentioned before we have two product managers. Well, spare a thought for them. How do you try and evaluate whether something belongs in your core if you have to resolve all these things we were talking about earlier? And also, how do you do that when your day-to-day -day job isn't building sites with Drupal? You know, being a product manager for Drupal is for core, and working on core is a full-time job for these people. And it is a, it's, a, it's a huge job. And so you're kind of you know, once or twice removed from the day-to-day -day work of building sites with Drupal nowadays. And you have to evaluate, is this a framework feature? that I'm evaluating, or is it a product feature? And who is the user you target? Uh, you know, we had a slide before with six or seven people listed. And then all the while, this is what we're up against from our competitors, you know? They ship this beautiful picture of, you know, everything's tickety-boo, and it works like this. Well, this is a house. It's always a house, right? If this was built with Drupal and you didn't want a house, you could pull it apart and make an apartment, right? They have a fixed feature list, they have defined use cases, and they have dedicated resources. We're a ragtag bunch of volunteers, right? <laughs> so this is what we're up against, and our best foot we put forward is the standard profile. Everyone's familiar with the standard profile? This is what you get, right? <laughs> <laughs> we're trying to solve everything generically, so we do nothing well, right? Everyone's heard the phrase, jack of all trades and master of none. That is the standard profile. But we need to compete. You know? So people are evaluating Drupal as a solution, and they've got their feature list. And so we go into this death cage feature list showdown with these other people. And so it's an arms race. And the only way we compete is by we keep throwing modules at the problem. <laughs> Product X has feature Y. We need to compete. And so we keep throwing stuff in core, and that comes at a cost, because the maintenance burden goes up. And once something's in core, it's much harder to iterate on. Like, innovation in core is slow, and that's because there's quality gates. And I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that's a bad thing, but if something's in contrib, it can evolve rapidly, it can get, you know, ramp up fast, change. And as we know, Drupal 8 took five, five years. And I can say this about forum modules because I maintain it, but code is, like core is where modules go to die Forum is an example, right? It hasn't changed in seven years, and you can surely not tell me that nothing has changed on the internet with regards to forums in seven years, right? Do we really think that 2009 was the highlight of forums on the internet? <laughs> so Contrib is where the innovation occurs. So anyone here who maintains Contrib, I, I, I think there is a bit of a... Uh, you know, the, the, there's a quality gate there. Some people uh, think, oh, well, it's contrib, it's not as, you know, quality as core. If you put it in core, it's got that stamp of approval. But that's not necessarily so. There are, there are plenty of contrib developers who, and particularly in Drupal 8, who apply the same level of rigor that is applied to core. 
So innovation in Core is slow. Oh, but we have Semver now. We can add new features. And this is an attempt to facilitate faster innovation. But my opinion, looking at 8.1 and 8.2, I honestly think Semver killed small core. Now, small core was an initiative where we tried to make core focused on doing the framework stuff well and all the extraneous stuff, like forum, I can keep saying it, I'm just lucky to be able to do that, was going to be removed to, to contrib. And we got some of the way there. We moved poll module, uh, blog module, for example. But now that we're in this six-month Semver cycle, we have to have something new to herald every six months. Uh, you know, Dries previews these at the DrupalCon, right? Coming in 8.3, we've got X, Y, Z. And nobody wants to download 8.3 if all it contains is bug fixes. S stability's not sexy, right? Um, bug fixes aren't sexy, yeah? So we've got these experimental modules. Now, this is a session from Gabor, and I recommend you go and check it out. It's, it's really good. Um, and the idea behind experimental modules is we get more eyes on our future enhancements. Um, you know, we say, well, we think that this is something that we want to have in core. It's not fully baked yet, so we're going to put it in core as an experimental module. There's no warranty, but we want people to have a look at it. So it's almost the notion of a promoted contrib module, and that's really what it is. It's in core, but we don't certify that it's got anywhere near the, you know, it's not ready yet. Now they have 12 months to mature, so once they're in, they have to get to a beta, then they have to get to stable. If they're not stable in 12 months, then they're removed. Now, I think migrate module must be getting close to that 12 months, but it's getting close to the beta as well. So things are happening there. Now with these experimental mental modules, there are no guarantees, as I said, and, and Gabor goes into it in detail. Um, the APIs are fluid and we reserve the right to change things. And so anyone who wrote migration code for Drupal 8.0 will know that in 8.1 it changed and it changes again in 8.2. And the maintainers of those modules are well within their rights to do that because that's what we document in our experimental policy. But that, as people building projects for clients, doesn't really give us any solidity, to, uh, any a solid platform to build on. And if we look at, uh, say for example, this, this 12 month guarantee. Now maybe that 12 month guarantee would have been a good thing if we had it for Drupal 7. I mean, overlay module and dashboard module and you know the like probably wouldn't have lasted as long as they did. But the shifting sand these create uh, doesn't really give us much certainty when we're putting projects. So if you're using these, and, and Gabor talked about this too, you know, you've got to be willing to be on the bleeding edge, right? You've got to be prepared that you might have to apply some patches. You might have to reinstall your site a few times. And so they're not, they're not recommended for production. And the other problem that I think these create, and as I said, this is my opinion, um, is that we're competing with ourselves. Now, everyone's familiar with workbench moderation. That became content moderation in core. But content moderation is experimental. So if I'm building a site on 8.2, do I use content moderation or do I use workbench moderation? And the answer varies, right? But if I'm a developer, do I contribute patches to workbench moderation or do I com com um, contribute them to content moderation? Because, but the two aren't compatible. And for what it's worth, this talk of completely changing the way that transitions and states are configured in the core module, and that's in eight, between 8.2 and 8.3. So again, there's no stability. If you're building a project for a client, and you're starting today, and you know it's going to finish in six months when 8.3 is out, you probably would start with content moderation if you were doing a reinstall sort of workflow where every time you build, you reinstall. But if you were going with actual production data, you'd probably stick with the first one. Now, there's plans to create a uh, upgrade path from the 8.2 workbench moderation to the core content moderation. But again, uh, there's only one person who's working on that, and that's the same person who's working on content moderation in core and also maintaining a lot of other modules and, and that's Tim and he's doing a great job and he actually you know, had a blog post recently about how hard it is to get something into core and I recommend you go and read it. Um, it's, it's really good but what I'm basically saying here is it feels like we're duplicating a bit of effort maintaining two things in similar places. So I'm going to change tack a little bit here and just talk a little bit about what I said there with one person maintaining it all. Uh, who here considers Drupal their primary source of income? So we're talking about 75% of the room. 
yet who here has contributed something to Drupal today or this week or this month or this year? Or if you're an agency uh, and your primary business is Drupal, are you giving your employees time? Now, there was a session yesterday from Spark, and I recommend everyone watches it when it's, uh, the recording's up, but they've basically said that from now on, everything they build will be on Drupal.org, even their client, you know, client code. If it's not on Drupal.org, they won't use it. Um, so, yeah, I think we all have a, uh, a sort of shared uh, responsibility here. And this is a quote that I've said several times, and I just want to reiterate it. But for an ecosystem that provides gainful benefit and employment for so many people, so much work, work falls to so few. Mm. And I'll give you some numbers. I'm not just going to throw that out there. So we had 3,750 uh, 3, people have worked on an issue, and I'm just going to deal with core here, uh, for Drupal 8. Now, in six years, we fixed 15,000 issues. So, and that was done by 37,000, oh, sorry, 3,750 people. So that's not too bad. That's five issues per person, right? That's five issues, five years. That's great. Well, you can all do one issue per year. But the reality of it is that um, only 270 of those 3,750 worked on 20 or more issues. And so 270 is only 7% of that. So 93% is the long tail. Now, 20 over five or six years is only two or three a year, right? If we take it up to 50, there's only 128 people. Now, 50 is still only 10 a year. That's one issue a month, right? So of all the Drupal core, 3% of the people that have worked on it have uh, you know, done 50 or more patches, which is one patch a month for five years. So it's, it's not, we're not talking about huge numbers of people looking after it here. So if, let's, let's be optimistic and say that the filter is 20. So 20, 270 people worked on 20 issues or more, and it took us five years to resolve 15,000 issues. Any wonder it took so long, right? Now, that's great. Drupal 8's out. Who cares, right? But it took us five years to fix 15,000 issues. Does anyone have, want to have a guess at how many open issues there are against Drupal 8 right now? There's 11,000, right? That's as of October 11, and of those, four and a half thousand are bugs. Now, a lot of them are probably duplicates, right? But there's only so many, much time in the day that you can spend you know, trawling through. And so if you've been around Drupal long enough, a lot of this seems very familiar. Five years ago before DrupalCon London, Drupal 7 had been out for six months. In frustration with the number of bugs in core, some of the maintainers put up a white flag and said, we need to make core maintainable. And that's when I got involved in core development. That was, I saw the white flag. So is this history repeating? And if you want to go back and uh, like look into this, that's the original post uh, from Sun saying, we have a Drupal crisis. And the second one is a podcast from Lullabot. It had Sun, Catch, uh, a couple of others all on the call, uh, eating, discussing it. Um, so is it history repeating? Or can we just pick up where we left off? Now, when we, this, out of that whole crisis, there were three things that we identified the problem were. One was we needed an unofficial framework initiative. Now, we did that with Drupal 8. The unofficial framework initiative was Drupal 7 is a pile of spaghetti. We need to untangle it and make it maintainable. And we largely got there with Drupal 8. There's still a few rough edges, but we largely got there. The second one was to evaluate heuristics for core feature evaluation. And that's just a fancy way of saying, if someone's going to spend three years working on a patch and then we say, oh, we don't really want that, we probably should have that process up front. And we do have that now. It's called the core ideas queue. So if you've got an idea for Drupal core, you don't put it in the core issue queue. You go to drupal.org slash project slash ideas and you propose your idea. And then you get some people to review it. And if they think it's good, they'll say, yeah, this is good. Let's get some more eyes on it. And if you get it to RTBC, then there is a committee of Drupal core committers, so like Alex, Angie, uh, uh, Nathaniel, they all evaluate it. And if they think it's good, they, say, they mark it fixed and they say, go create an issue in Drupal core, we're on board. So there are issues where people have spent 18 months, two years, re-rolling something and you know, only to be told, well, we, this isn't really what we want. So this is, we're there. But the third thing they come up with was Drupal as a platform. And so maybe that's the answer to identity problem. So just to recap what the problems were, you have to determine what goes in core, there's too much in core to maintain, the process is slow, we have to do it generically, and we have to avoid bike shed. And so maybe we already have the technology. 
maybe we should focus on only putting generic building blocks in core and take the product features out and use install profiles to show how to put them together, which is what a Lego creator set is, right? Oh, you can just see it down the bottom here. You get enough parts to build this, this, or this, but they're all the same parts, and we show you how to build them. And so maybe we need to focus on a real product in core, something that serves a purpose, you know, something that shows people how to do things, but can also act as a promotional tool. So the people that have been around long enough will probably recognize this as the Snowman Initiative, right? Well, I'm going to say the initiative formerly known as Snowman because nothing much really became of it because we were all focused back here on trying to get this unofficial framework initiative in and we didn't have the building blocks in core. We didn't have, you know, entity reference and views and those little building blocks that you need to build a real site. So maybe it's time we pick it up again. Um, and so to that end, during TripleCon Dublin, we had a conversation around what sort of products would we put in Core? What, what, what would it look like to demonstrate how Core would work? Now, originally the idea was a portfolio site because most people that use Drupal are agencies of some sort and they need a portfolio site. But at the same time, the uh, documentation team have been working on a new user guide. And if you haven't seen it, I really suggest you look out. And it basically takes you through the discovery and the learning process of Drupal through the hypothetical situation of creating a farmer's market website. There are vendors, there are um, recipes, and there's a baked content model, right? And they take you through how you would build that with Drupal step by step. So there's a fixed scope. And so maybe, well, not only could you follow from the user guide, but you could also see what the end product was, a little bit like these Lego kits, right? Got the instructions you can follow on and build it yourself, but we've already got it here. And the good thing about that is, because there's a fixed scope, we can avoid bike shedding. Now, Someone proposed that we needed a new user-facing theme in core because Bartek is getting a bit long in the tooth. And it descended into a flaming bike shed of doom. Um, <laughs> because you can't please everyone, right? If you put a new theme in core, it has to be able to have a treatment for every single element that core could output. It has to cover every scenario. And, you know, every single site that, because people, the idea is someone installs that and uses that for their site. But if you have a fixed scope, like the farmer's market profile, um, you know, it's a product, you can get a designer in and say, you're designing a site that's hypothetical for a market. And then all of a sudden, well, you don't care about all these other elements that Drupal Core needs to support because they're not in this install profile. So I think, personally, and like I said, this is my feeling, that this is the first step in the right direction. So there's an issue called Create Experimental install Installation Profile. Now, this went through the ideas queue. We had a meeting, there was Joe Schindler from uh, Drupalize me and the documentation team, Gabor from Acquia, uh, Kevin from Acquia, Roy from the UX team, uh, and, a, and uh, a few others, uh, David, and we said, we were supposed to be talking about default content in Core, and we said, well, we don't want to put something else in Core, we want to actually do something that's useful, because if standard profile came with default content, who would care, right? It's still the same old pile of random bricks, but now it's got a new random brick. Um, so you put it in the Drupal Ideas queue, and it got RTBC, and it got fixed last week. Now I had to change my slides this morning, but I'm happy to have to change my slides, because now that means that we can start working on this. And we're not adding anything more to the stand-in profile. We're not just bolting more things on the side. And at the same time, we also discussed this idea, which is getting the installer to promote and allow downloading of vetted install profiles from the installer. So that's still in the idea phase, but in first discussions with people, there's some broad support for it. And I like to call this like the choose your own adventure of Drupal. Right from the installer, we already fetch language packs, right? If you want to install Drupal in German, that's not in the tarball you downloaded. It hits Drupal.org's locale service, downloads the German translation, and then you're away. From that second screen of the installer, everything's in German. So we've got like a, uh, like we've got a proof of concept for downloading stuff in the installer. And this would allow us to give install profiles like a first class uh, like treatment in core. But uh, you'll notice there the keyword vetted. I don't think this should be an open gate. I think that this should be something that our product managers evaluate. And for me, this is the thing, of all of the gripes that I've indicated before, this is the thing that kind of reconciles all of them the most. Because it allows us to focus on generic framework in core and products in install profiles, which is, I think is where they belong. And it also allows us to compete because 
if you think of some of the install profiles out there, Open Social on Drupal 8 is brilliant. It's, it's like Facebook. And you've built your own Facebook as soon as you install it. Uh, we've got Commerce Kickstart on 7, everyone be aware of. It's a store in a box. We've got Lightning, which they're talking about next door, which is like geared towards publishing and media agencies. We've got Agov, which I'm kind of biased towards, obviously. Um, so yeah, when in this model, there's kind of something for everyone. Now, the problem we've got with the stuff we put in core at the moment, a lot of the time they're these boat hull pieces. They're great for building boats, but you can't build a house with them, right? If we move to this model, the things that go in core should be things that are generic enough to rebuild a house, a boat, a car, whatever. So not single-use features. So the things that I see that fit in here are like inline entity form, and there is a core idea for that. Having that, um, so someone's, uh, this guy is a bit wild. No, I think it was me. Now has proposed putting that in core because it's a generic building block. Uh, entity browser is another one, but there's also something in this for marketing because, like I said before. Stability isn't sexy, bugs aren't sexy. We need to have something to herit with each release. And so we can say Drupal 8.4 now comes with Commerce Kickstart, or Drupal 8.4 now comes with Inline Entity Form. We're not being opinionated about how you use it by putting it in standard profile, but it's there if you want to build things. And we can also market new features and profiles. Drupal 8.4 now comes with portfolio site that now includes an image gallery, for example. There's something for the product managers because they can focus on vetting the profiles, right? The process would be, okay, well, I think that this profile is core worthy. The product managers can evaluate it and they can just um, direct other reviewers of core towards these profiles in Contrib and say, well, do we think it's core worthy? What do you think of it? And there's something for new contributors. So in the background of the chart we've got here is what it takes to be a good core contributor. And so you know, down the bottom here, this is also from five years ago, so it's a bit out of date, but you know, contributing design patterns, whatever. I think you can't see at the top, but right at the top there it says you are CHX, and then at the very top it says you're Chuck Norris. But um, <laughs> with new contributors, an install profile is largely exported site building. And you know, all of us can do that. It's, the, the, it's nowhere near as intimidating as the whole core process. Anyway, I've spoken for long enough. We've got another 15 minutes or so. And I just wanted everyone else to throw their thoughts towards me. Uh, I've got the microphone here. Yeah, thank you. Um, I'm just curious to know if you've uh, had this chat with the Drupal Association at all. Um, I know that for a while now they've been talking about uh, that sort of installation profile builder and the idea of sort of targeting it uh, towards different communities of practice and having like a, a, a fire station profile and a police station profile and a hospital profile, etc. No, I haven't. No, no, I wasn't even aware of it. The association has nothing to do with the building of Yes, yeah. but he's talking about the infrastructure on Drupal.org. Oh. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. And sorry, sorry, Katie. I, I remember being on a conference call with you when it was discussed, and it was just <laughs> a, an idea that everyone seems to really love. Um, so I think you got. Yeah, so sort of like with like jQuery UI, you can like build your custom build of type thing. Is that what yeah. you're talking about? Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. I'm just saying. I think there's a lot of support behind it. Yeah, I think um, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Um, I think anything that allows us to market Drupal as a product without feeling that we have to put stuff in core is a good idea. And like I said, this is my own personal opinion, so take it with a grain of salt. Yeah. Ivan's got the mic, so three hand up. So hi, thanks, thanks for the presentation. Um, the, the Drupal is the community, all right? Yes. And there's different aspects of the community. Some, some people claim they're builders, some developers, some themers, some do various things of these, uh, some of them more, some of them less. But still, everybody needs each other. So um, people have ideas. They do bug testing. They they like contribute back maybe time and energy. They cannot put code where they're. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have qualified those comments before. That yeah, they they're not just code contributions. Yeah. Yes. They're, they're, yeah. Like, and Don will attest to this that there were so many issues in Drupal 8 that were stalled on needs manual testing. Yes, there could be usability or Anyone documentation could, yeah. issues that people yeah. contribute. Yes, but when it comes to code, because I come here as a representative of Backdrop. Yeah. And we have the same issue. There's too many issues created on a smaller scale, but the ratio is still the same. Uh, and I'm, I'm one of the people that creates that. So we create more issues than we can solve. And yep. the goal but is to be solved. But 
If, the, if you go onto Drupal.org today and you find an issue that's been closed, maintainer needs more info for more than two years, and you move it to closed fix, you've contributed, right? Yes. If there's an issue that's um, that's stuck at postpone needs more info, and you yes, can you provide the, you've, you've contributed. I'm you not tried, saying patches is the yes, only yes, way. Yes, yes, yes. You tried the queue, you tried to find duplicates and close them. Yes, this is helping as well. Yes. But I'm saying the small core uh, initiative, uh, though it would please the people that are creating the actual code, uh, making a small core uh, featureless, th that's the way that I see it as a, a, a site builder, would make me move to something like uh, WordPress. It's but I'm, I'm not saying cr create a small core, I'm saying core focuses on doing something well, a yep. framework, and then we show off what you can do with Drupal with the install profiles, and so that the parts are there to build it, and it's all well and good to get a box full of bricks, but you need to know how to put those bricks together, and if you've never used it before, the install profile is the best way to do that, and at the moment, the best foot we put forward is standard, and I'm saying we should be putting forward a better foot than standard, to show people that this is what Drupal is capable of. Because I would imagine there'd be a lot of people who would evaluate Drupal, install it. You've got a choice between standard and minimal. Yep. Get to the thing you get, you have created no content yet. And go, well, this, is, yeah. this is rubbish. And, yeah. and never look at it again, right? Yeah, don't, don't, like, um, don't get me wrong. I'm with you on the forum yeah. thing. And I think I was the one that created an issue. I'm not, I haven't been back in the queues for like quite a long time. But I was the one uh, um, that created, I think, the issue about metrics, core metrics, yep. in order to get some feedback of, on, on how, how many people, a percentage, are actually using core features. So we know that this is something that people yep. are not using. So let's remove it. Yep. It will simplify the make the developer's life easier. Oh, look, the fact is we can't, re we can't remove anything now. It's, it's, we've got API backwards compatibility, but yeah. Yes, and it was an issue. The experimental thing is one of the things that I envy sort of like in Drupal now. Yeah. Uh, but what happens if someone starts using the experiment? I know you said no warranties or whatsoever, but. Well, one of them is probably going to fall out in the next cycle, and that's yes. inline form errors. So that's been in since, I think, 8.0. It wasn't polished enough for a stable release, so it went in as experimental. And there's got a large issue queue, a lot of issues with it. No one really wants to maintain it. And so it, it may fall out, and that will be the first one. You know, um, Whereas there's modules like BigPipe that went in in 8.1 that are, that, are that are stable already, because they have people looking after them, and, and you know, they have support. So. Um, True. Uh, Donna said, and that sometimes comes down to people who need the feature being unable to contribute to its maintenance. Yeah, and yeah, I don't want to hog the mic anymore. Just, so it wasn't a Thank question, you. it was a discussion, that's why. So. And, yeah, there's not, there's, and these don't have to be questions. The idea is this is a discussion, right? This, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was just that from a site builder aspect of things, yeah. I understand the, uh, that we take the fun out of quarters if we do not implement, uh, the, I don't know, Composer and everything that comes with it. But the rest of the community, I don't know if that's half and half or 20, 80 percent, or I don't know what. There's no metrics about that. No. But it will make people unhappy if, because we all know that everything that falls out of core loses quality. That's why we say core quality. Oh, I, I don't, right? I don't, I don't, I don't agree with that. I mean, well, well, it will be a few, a few modules like views or rules that get a, a big audience behind them, but some of them will get back as. Yeah, I disagree. I mean, how many tests have you got in some of your country modules? Uh, well, there you go. 100 test classes in a, in a country project. Uh, test methods. Test methods, still. That's test cases. <laughs> okay, fair enough, fair enough. Yep. Right? <laughs> yeah. So I, I think that the, the, the notion that contrib isn't as quality as core is, that, look, there are some places where it's got awful, but that, that's, I think I want to challenge that, you know. And the fact is that a lot of the modules that are, like you need to build a replay site are maintained by people who also work on core as well, you know. Which adds to the burden and the, and the you know the, the problem about th there's only so much time in the day, but it does you know increase the quality of those modules. Yeah. Hi. Um, to some extent, I, I, I often describe uh, what we do is that we're a small insect living on a large mammal um, because we're we're a small agency that builds a lot of stuff in Drupal, but 99% of the logic we build is contrib, right? Yeah. So that's unusual. We've got, we have got developers on the team, but development is kind of unusual as opposed to the rule. Most of it's like logic, um, you know, database logic and stuff. 
One of the things with Core is, because like, we've just bounced off 8 recently. Um, we've done a, some small sites in 8. Then we had to do damage control for someone else's 8 site and went, wow, it's just not here, really, once you start to do any heavy lifting. What, what I find interesting is Core is running around trying to compete with stuff that it doesn't really compete with. It's just trying to compete with SaaS services or it's trying to compete with corporate CMSs. Whereas what Drupal does great is I'm a framework which then allows you to plug yeah, and, and other that, things in. Yeah, that's kind of what I was saying in this so, slide back here, that we, we, like that list doesn't even mention any of those other frameworks. Uh, come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, but that's what we're competing with. We're competing with .NET, we're competing with Silver Stripe and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And the reason we can win is because we can say, well, 95% of this is already here, which isn't really kind of true in Drupal 8, but it looks like Core's put a huge amount of effort into producing stuff that I don't know whether anyone's using. Um, and it's trying to see Core is trying to be a CMS on its own, even though that's not what was successful about 7, was that it, it didn't do very much, but because of the, the Contrib community, it means you could build... I, I think that that will catch up. Um, yeah, it will yeah. do. But, but the mean, way, and, and I'm going to be pretty blunt, but the way it catches up is by people saying, OK, I'm going to take a chance on 8, and I'm going to try and fill in some of the gaps. And, you know, and, and like Spark said yesterday, that the, the client needs to take... Ooh, the client needs to take an active part in that, whether that's through sponsorship. And that doesn't mean necessarily sponsoring your team, but your team might be able to put them in touch with the module maintainer and, and sponsor a feature from them, you know, that, or, or, or fix a bug or something like that. Um, yeah, we, do, we totally contribute. Yeah, yeah I'm, not, I'm not saying you don't. I'm just saying, like, that, that, that you know, like, if, if you want to be, like, uh, the, only, the fastest way Drupal 8 is going to get more features is if more people use it and, and sort of, we all work together towards that, yeah. I completely, completely agree. Okay. What I'm saying, I mean, everyone's got to put effort in, right? I'm just saying, where is the effort going, in a way? It's so like the effort, I mean, this is just my perception, so I'm not saying this is objectively true, but yeah. we're having a discussion, um, is the effort seems to be going into putting more stuff into core uh, in order to try and make core look like a product, as opposed to keeping core out of the way and leaving people to contribute to the Contrib ecosystem so that it catches up and is much better in, you know, in a year or two than where 7 is. Because yep. I, I think it's fantastic, the stuff that's happened to the, you know, on an architectural level and from separating config and content level in 8. It's great. It's needed to happen for a long time. But it's odd to see the core culture trying to compete with some kind of corporate, you know, global yep. corporate identity. I agree. I, agree. Whereas, whereas, yeah. whereas I feel it's kind of sucking energy out of other places? I agree. Uh, you, you won't get any arguments from me on that. And, um, <laughs> but yeah, if I'll anyone wants to talk about fixing I'll things... Talk, I'll talk to you more about it <laughs> later. If, you know, yeah, yeah. If, yeah. Yeah. Uh -oh. Thank you for the talk. <laughs> um, as we know, that product manager are, you know, uh, their fo main focus is towards the core, Drupal core, not yes. the contrib. And it was uh, by introducing the idea of you know vetting the profile system, you are introducing like country profile in the mix, and they have to vet that, right? Right? And we have seen that uh, before the release of Drupal 8, we have this initiative of Drupal D8 upgrade uh, for upgrading the module, and uh, and and actually project managers started from there, uh, you know, to promote community to get yeah. involved and upgrade their module so that adaption for the uh, Drupal 8 will be better, right? Yes. yes. But then they slowly switched to the core because there was no uh, not enough movement at that point. So now you are <laughs> telling that they have. Oh, to uh, this, this is up for you know. I'm, this is up for this idea isn't approved, obviously. But this is what I what I the way I think I think about it. You know, um, there's probably a different ways it could go, and and I'm just trying to see what we have to. We can't just have open slather of profiles. You would agree? Yeah. Like you can't just have. Uh, uh, the project browser in uh, the installer, and, and you just pick any random thing because there's no guarantee that, it would, that it's going to actually work. You know, so if we have a vetted profile, and, and that vetting might just be, yep, it, it's got some accessibility stuff, and it's, you know, it puts a good foot forward, and it's clearly marked as, you know, something separate to Drupal uh, core, and um, and from that point forward, you know. We've got something else we can run a test suite against. And a lot of the argument for keeping Forum in core is that it provides a lot of tests for the way the comment, node, and taxonomy integrate together. But if we had these products with the test suites, et cetera, then maybe that. But, but I see what you're saying. Like, there's, there's only so much time to evaluate stuff, and you're trying to add more straws on the camel's back, right? Yeah. 
Yeah, so just one more thing. Uh, we have a, a, a lot of features uh, or a lot of things in Drupal.org uh, where we vet actual things like uh, organization profile was, yeah. uh, are vetted by Drupal Association and uh, pro project application is another where we uh, vet, you know, the yeah. so developer uh, mm. from the community. Yeah. But the thing is, uh, if you compare both, like the organization vetting process is going smoothly and not for the project application because there is no honor for that. As compared to, uh, you know, the organization, uh, DA is honor for that, uh, uh, you know. Yeah. And they are doing their due diligence for that. And we are lagging as a community in p uh, project application uh, queue and there's a long enough queue for three years people are applying. Yeah. Uh, waiting for. I don't pretend to have all the answers. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like uh, by introducing uh, another vetting process and then uh, not having an ownership for yeah. that. Yeah, oh, someone definitely has to be young. Yeah, so yeah. we should definitely have an ownership yeah. and uh, like and this ownership should have, you know, some kind of uh, well, you know, suited person for this kind of job. Yes. Yeah. 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 Thanks, Lee. Um, <clears throat> I was just thinking, like, it's a great idea. Would you would you think that just uh, you know promoting in, uh, profiles on Drupal.org or kind of trying to trying to emphasise the fact that when you download Drupal, like these are all the flavours of Drupal yeah, and you can download. That's what this screenshot's from an actual issue. Yeah. An issue to it's kind change of like, the Drupal.org download page to be something yeah, like yeah. this, you know, and the starter is. Stand, yep. standard obviously and uh, you can't see it in the bottom here but you know there's a um, there's a blog distribution that this one here says commerce I don't know if I can yeah I mean that would be an intermediate step right you wouldn't have to change the installer that didn't do anything at that point yeah yeah to do that on triple.org yes yeah that's true so the co comment was that the Drupal Association would need the staff and the money to do that, though. Like, that would require, yeah. But so um, we're seeing at the moment there's definitely this identity crisis you're talking about actually exists at the moment. Um, and so there's an idea going forward how to resolve it in the future. But as a, an organisation who's actually out building websites for clients, how are people managing that now? Because I even see it, even, it even boils down to myself. It's like I'm building a website and I don't know which approach am I taking, which version of Drupal am I, yeah. am I developer I, I putting it all in code or am I, I mean, it's building not a, a new, site? It's not a new problem. The product no, versus not. framework debate has been around for a long time, but we've just been busy focused on other things and, and I'm kind of saying I think it's time now to pick it up again. But, but um, yeah, it is hard. And coming to these events is, is like a good way because the networking that you get face-to-face -face is obviously a lot greater than you can get in an IRC channel, which is now being fractured into a Slack channel, which is now being fractured into Stack Overflow. You know, like, you know, there's one avenue here to talk to people. It's, but whereas with, if you're online, there's heaps, yeah. So you touched on one of the challenges that you and I have actually experienced while working on a project, which is the fiddle with it in panels, have it in code, and the natural tension where we've got CMI, the Config Management yes. Initiative. Yeah and producty kinds of things that allow site builders to do stuff in code. And, and it, it seems like, I mean, I don't see a kind of natural resolution to that challenge other than all down to workflow, all down to process. Yeah, I mean, some of the stuff that Adam spoke about earlier today, where they have a separate content authoring site to this actual view site, you were calling it, right? Yeah, the live site, yeah. It goes so taking the decoupling thing. <coughs> it's a bit of a yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but it, I mean, there's obviously the permission system to limit who has access to it. But I think um, there's two different classes of client. There's some clients that are really only going to be creating and editing content, and then there's power users that are going to be editing views and the like. And I think that. I know, this is my personal feeling that most of the sites I've worked on, the, the ones that want to build views are in like the exception um, without going through a, a Git workflow for it. People like me, sitting in between. Yeah, I, I, the yeah. And you build stuff. Yeah. And, and I'm pretty sure that must be frustrating for you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, but I mean, I know that 
there is a UI to download configuration changes in Drupal Core. So you can download that and copy it into the file system and use source tree or, or a Git UI. You know, so it's, it's, there are ways around it. Um, I know that Pam, Pam does things that way. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, just real quickly, is, uh, you mentioned obviously the, um, the, some of the experimental modules will start dropping out um, of core for whatever reason. Is there like a process to get that into Contrib or is it? Like, I, I don't know. Happen? We haven't had it happen yet. And, and okay. the only one that is kind of on the borderline is that inline entity form. Yeah. Uh, sorry, not inline entity form, um, inline form errors. Inline form, yeah, because I mean like that could be an awesome module um, and it could be useful. But if it just gets dropped out, then yeah. People, Look, you know, poll module found a new home, and um, yeah. blog module found a new home. So, yeah. you know, if I think that if someone cares about it, they then and they say, "Yep, well, I'm, I'll be that person," or they say, "Well, I care about it, and I'll find someone who can help me care for it," or you know, or, or you know, like I care for it, but I can't maintain it myself. But I know someone who can, and I can work with them. Or, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah. Anyway, awesome presentation. Thanks. Thanks. I've got to go. So thanks everyone for my shared therapy session. <laughs>